I was surprised uh, by the clip we're going to show you now. I guess I had never really paid attention to him. Perhaps you know him, <clears throat> Prime Minister Viktor Orban. I, I thought this statement that we're now all about to watch uh, was one of the clearest, most uh, articulate, uh, ele even eloquent statements I've heard from an Eastern uh, European leader on this issue of the war in Ukraine. I'm anxious to hear your thoughts. You, you made a great deal about 19, oh, I'm 1956 fighter, yeah. and fighting for freedom. You have a neighbor who is invaded by Russia, the very country, you know, you grew up with pictures of tanks going into Budapest. You know, why are you opposing no, the European aid? No, no, it's, it's emotionally, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's tragic. So, so we, all of our heart is with the Ukrainians. We understand how much they suffer, but I'm speaking here as a politician who should save lives. So the most important thing for the international political community is to save lives, especially when you are convinced, as I do, that there is no chance to win this war. So therefore, what we should do far more energy invest into to convince everybody that the only solution is ceasefire. And then after the ceasefire, peace talks should start. And then we could back to your point, yeah? To, you, to but, the, you, but do you really think there is no chance of Ukraine winning? That's and my surely point. the main, surely the, they stand very little chance of winning without the aid which you are currently blocking. No, no, my, my, my position is that uh, looking at the reality, uh, looking at the figures, looking at the surroundings, looking at the fact that NATO is not ready to send troops, it's obvious that there is no victory for uh, Ukra poor Ukrainians on the battlefield. Clarify for us again the U.S. policy here, because it says that as a general matter, Ukraine shouldn't strike inside Russia. What exactly does that mean, general matter? And does Ukraine, you know, a country that's been under attack for more than a year, not have a legitimate right to attack its aggressor back on its own territory? We don't tell them where to strike. We don't tell them, uh, you know, we're not to strike. We don't tell them how to conduct their operations. We give them equipment. We give them training. We give them advice and counsel. Heck, we even do uh, tabletop exercises with them to help them plan out what they're going to do. But ultimately, President Zelensky and his military commanders decide what they're going to do uh, from a military perspective. And they decide what they're going to do with the equipment that has been provided to them and that they now own. All that said, we have been very clear uh, that we do not support attacks inside Russia, and we do not en enable and we do not encourage uh, attacks inside Russia. Credible, Colonel. I, I remember another public figure who said, uh, I feel your pain, but I did not have sex with that woman. Yes. Okay. And we, did, we later discovered, oh, gosh, surprise, surprise, he had sex with her. So <clears throat> I think this falls into the same category. I. I would not expect him to say anything else, but I would not impute any uh, any integrity to it. You've uh, you've seen this clip before, but I, I can't resist the temptation of running it past you again in light of what you just said uh, about arrogance. Here's uh, Victoria Newland about four or five months ago <clears throat> encouraging an invasion of Crimea mm -hmm. with American military support. There is a drone base in Crimea where the drones that the Iranians have yes, given yeah. Russia are being launched from. There are command and control sites in Crimea that are essential for Russia's hold on all of the territory, including the land bridge. There are mass military installations on Crimea that Russia has turned into essential logistics and back office depots for this war. Those are legitimate targets. Ukraine is hitting them. And we are supporting that. There's the battering ram uh, argument right out of the mouth of the number three official in the United States Department of State. Yeah, well, she's telling you the truth. Uh, everything she said is accurate. I obviously don't support the policy position. She would have made a great spokesman for the Soviet Armed Forces back <laughs> during the Second World War in 1941 when the heroic forces of the motherland were throwing back the Wehrmacht. We all know that didn't happen. Went on for years. So this this is the sort of thing you just you just take it in. You understand that this person is part of a of a partisan group of people 
who are determined to keep us at war. And not just us, but our allies, and they will do anything in their power to sustain this. And if that involves lying, then so be it. Here's uh, another one of those uh, partisans, um, Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, just uh, four days ago, <coughs> uh, meeting with uh, President Zelensky in Kiev. Uh, nice to meet you. How are you, sir? Yeah, we have, we, we have, I think, this whole meeting. Thank you very much. Thanks, United States people of, of the United States for all big support. Thank you so much. Free or die. Free or die. Now you are free. Yes. And we will be. And the Russians are dying. It's the best money we've ever spent. Thank you so much. Well, now how reckless is that? The best money we've ever spent is because is on Russians dying. Well, there are two kinds of fools. There's the harmless fool that tells funny jokes and is self-deprecating. And then there are dangerous fools. This man falls into the second category. He's a dangerous fool. He does not understand what he confronts. He does not understand the, the consequences of our actions that could ultimately spread to Europe and ultimately to the United States. Russia is not just a great power. It is one of the great powers on the planet. And, uh, he doesn't seem to get it. He doesn't want to believe that. He's happy with the delusion and the arrogance. And that's what you saw. Remember, he, uh, at the outset of uh, the military uh, conflagration, advised uh, President Biden in a very public way that Putin should be assassinated. Yeah, of course. Well, look, the Senate is a strange place, Judge. The Senate is uh, the closest thing that you're going to find to fantasy land in politics. It's kind of a, an, a Mount Olympus with a, a circus on it. And people bloviate in it all the time, saying lots of things for which they're never held accountable and which they that don't really ultimately involve themselves. They say it for effect. He's one of the best, uh, says lots of things for effect. And he assumes that the, you know, there's no buck stopping at his door. And he misses the point that dragging us into a major war with Russia would be catastrophic for us, for Europe, for the Russians. Here's um, Deputy Secretary uh, of State Newland again. This is uh, just uh, over the weekend. Um, it, it's unclear to whom she's speaking. It sounds as though she's speaking uh, to Ukrainian leaders or elite uh, in Ukraine. She mm. may be in the U.S., but per perhaps... Uh, um, via the computer is speaking to them, but I'm, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on what she admits and what she expects. And even as you plan for the counteroffensive, which we have been working on with you for some four or five months, we are already beginning our discussions uh, with the Ukrainian government and with friends in Kyiv, both in the civilian side and on the military side about Ukraine's long-term future. We'll start with the uh, offensive, about which they've been speaking since the wintertime. Spring is almost over. Tomorrow's the first day of June. I don't want to get semantic about whether it's truly a spring offensive, but uh, are you surprised to hear her say in public, we, that either means the State Department, the CIA, the DOD, the Biden administration, the federal government, have been working with you on the spring offensive for four or five months? Why, no, I, in God's name, would she say that even if it were true? Well, she's very proud of it. And she wants to identify herself publicly with the entire crusade to destroy Russia. And that's what this is really all about. She's telling you the truth. And I'm sure that we have worked tediously uh, for many, many months to try and organize for this thing, particularly as the back boot, you know, slaughterhouse was underway. That's why 30 to 35,000 Ukrainian soldiers have been training at areas in the United States, Canada, Germany, the Czech Republic, and elsewhere are coming back to Ukraine. They're going to form the backbone for much of this offensive. They'll be augmented by whatever is still alive and can carry a weapon and, and so forth. So, no, I, I think she's telling you the truth, and she's very proud of that. The second part is actually more interesting. Yes. Because it reminds me, <clears throat> reminds me of this scene I don't know if you've seen it or not. Many of your viewers may have in the movie Downfall at the end, just before Hitler shoots himself in the bunker. Uh, one of the women comes up to him and says, but mein Führer, 
what about the inevitable victory? And he looked at her. He, he, he just turns his head away, goes into the room and shoots himself. Well, I think we're dealing with something similar to that. You know, they're, they're putting the cart way out ahead of the horse and, and they're never going to see that cart 